New York City's subway is massive. With more than 470 stations across four boroughs, it's really good at getting people in and out of Manhattan. But there's a problem. A lot of people don't actually need to go into Manhattan, and it's really hard to get to where they do need to go. Say you live here in East Bushwick, and you work here in Midwood. It's a little over six miles away, so it's going to take you a couple of hours to walk, 45 minutes to cycle, or 30 minutes to drive. But if you want to go by a subway, that's going to take you an hour, and you'd have to go all the way into Manhattan and then back out again. Despite millions of people living and working in New York City's outer boroughs, there's no subway line that really connects them. At least, not yet. Enter the Interborough Express. It's the MTA's latest idea for a new subway line to connect Brooklyn and Queens by an abandoned freight railway. This could change a lot of people's lives, but building in New York is never easy, and there's still loads to do before it becomes reality. When the subway was being designed, it was being designed to get people off the streets where the primary public transportation system was horse-drawn uh, back in the later part of the 19th century. And that meant there was a different kind of pollution in New York City. And uh, it's been described that people were very often knee-deep in it. Yikes. The most densely populated part of the city at the time was Lower Manhattan. So when the subway network grew, the lines expanded from Manhattan to the outer boroughs. In the mornings, Manhattan acts like a heart and draws in the workers from their homes in the surrounding areas. The streets become filled with crowds of workers and shoppers. Then in the evening, the workers stream home again and the business section becomes a ghost city. So the city ended up with a system that looks like this. A bunch of radial lines coming out from Manhattan to the outer boroughs, and not a lot of circumferential lines actually connecting the rest of the city. It's not just New York that followed this blueprint. Chicago, Washington DC, and Stockholm all have metro networks that radiate out from their central business districts. Places like Moscow have literally built a ring line to connect their outer boroughs, but in New York, the system is still centered around Manhattan. Enter Jeffrey Zupan. Uh, I'm a senior fellow for transportation at the Regional Plan Association. And Kate Slevin. I'm executive vice president of Regional Plan Association. Jeffrey began advocating for an interborough subway line in New York back in the 90s when he helped write this report. Kate is still advocating for it today. Triborough RX was the original name of the project. The idea was to look at all the underused or abandoned rights away that were in both in the city and the surrounding suburbs and try to make better use of them for public transit. We had a lot of proposals in, in the region at risk and some of them uh, hit the mark right away and some didn't. And I have to say that Triborough RX was not among those that were even talked about, I would say for 10 or 15 years. 26 years later, that proposal is being revived as the Interbar Express. If you're having deja vu right now, then you could be thinking about any number of New York City transit projects that were proposed, planned, started, and then stopped again for decades. Remember the Second Avenue subway that took nearly a century to complete? Well, for everyone's sake, let's hope this project moves a little faster. So I am so excited here today to announce that we have finished a feasibility study. See, I said make it happen fast, and it's death. I, I, I told you, I'm impatient. We've gotten a lot more interest in improving transit in the outer boroughs than you had in the 90s because people have seen the job growth. Recently during COVID, we saw some of the neighborhoods in the outer boroughs that would be served by the inner borough line. They still had tons of people going to work throughout the whole entire pandemic, and there was increased desire to improve public transit for them. The Interborough Express would run 14 miles from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn to Jackson Heights, Queens in 40 minutes or less. It would break New York's pattern of subway lines radiating out from Manhattan, stretching across two of the city's outer boroughs and intersecting with up to 17 existing subway lines leading into Manhattan. The MTA says the Interborough Express would serve up to 88,000 riders a day and could shave more than half an hour off people's commutes. Now, that could make a big difference to people who've traditionally been underserved by public transit. Seven in 10 are people of color, and three in 10 live significantly below the poverty line. And as Manhattan becomes more and more expensive, many people and businesses are leaving the city for the outer boroughs like Brooklyn and Queens. In fact, since the Great Depression, roughly half of New York City's job growth has happened in the outer boroughs. 
and the area around the Interborough Express is expected to add tens of thousands of new residents and jobs over the next 25 years. We're largely relying on a very old system that doesn't provide some of the connections that we need today. And so we're kind of in playing a game of catch up in some ways um, to provide those vital connections and catch up with the population growth we've seen. The construction of the line itself presents an interesting opportunity. There's already a rail line in place called the Bay Ridge Branch. It opened in 1876 as a passenger service line, but was shut down in 1924 because there weren't as many tourists going to Manhattan Beach. Now, the Bay Ridge Branch is used to transport just one round-trip freight train per day on average. The idea for the Interborough Express is to repurpose that underused line to add commuter service, while also building up existing freight trains alongside it. Since most of the route has already been built, the project should cost much less than building an entire new subway line from scratch. Now, that'll be a huge selling point as the project seeks funding. New York City subway construction is some of the most expensive in the world. Sadly, it's not as easy as just adding passenger trains to the existing track. There's a long list of engineering challenges that the Metropolitan Transportation Authority will face. They'll have to manoeuvre a fuel pipeline that serves LaGuardia and JFK airports. Elevated segments of the new route would need to navigate road traffic and other subway lines. And there might not be enough vertical space for a new passenger line to weave through some of the existing underpasses. To make things even more complicated, the air rights above part of the existing route have been sold or leased to private developers. That would mean the MTA needs to construct new viaducts or tunnels to avoid the existing properties. And all of that means more time and money. There are still a lot of question marks around how the Interborough Express would actually work. It's not yet decided which mode of transit the line would be serviced by – conventional rail, light rail or bus rapid transit. And it's unclear how the project will be financed. The MTA chairman estimated the cost would be single-digit billions and take three to five years of construction. The plan's also missing a key part of the RPA's original Tribro RX proposal – the connection with the Bronx. Some Bronx residents have said they're left out of the Interborough Express idea, and State Senator Jessica Ramos has called on the governor to connect that borough too. I mean, they have to start somewhere, right? They're not going to build the whole 22-mile corridor. It makes sense to start in Brooklyn and Queens for a bunch of different reasons. One, the MTA actually owns the right-of-way there, so uh, you know it'll just be easier to do a project there. Two, um, the Bronx is um, getting a, a big transit project called Penn Access, which will bring the Metro North into Penn Station, and that would be along the same line as the Bronx portion of the Triborough. First you start with Brooklyn, Queens, and then we'll see what happens. There's a way to go before the Interborough Express becomes a reality. But it's a rare opportunity to take something old and make it new again. And in a city with some of the biggest stations and more subway lines than you can keep track of, one of its most impactful projects might be sitting right in front of us, just waiting to be built. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you subscribe to the B1M.